Oh, hi. Welcome back, house guests. We have another updates and spoilers with me, Maddie's mom. <laughs> welcome, welcome, everyone. All right, so uh, in case you were under a rock, Maddie is back today, well, tonight, for the um, recap. And she'll be back doing the spoilers tomorrow. So you only miss two days. It's cool. Cool, cool, cool. Tight, tight, tight. So the house guests of the day for today are Gail Murphy. Thank you very much. And Jenny Swendener. Also, thank you very much. We couldn't do it without you. You guys really are the lifeblood of this channel. Well, you're the bankers of this channel because we couldn't survive on the um, YouTube revenue alone. So we really appreciate all that you do for us. And in return, we bring you our commentary. <laughs> Thank you. And if you're interested in a shout out, a holla for a dollar, it's going to be in the info box below, the little link to go to Patreon. So thank you. And also, I don't have any super chats to read today because I didn't get any yesterday because it wasn't live. But if I did have them, I would read them now, but I don't. All right. When we, when I left off yesterday, um, everybody was waiting for the veto comp to start and it started a little bit later than it usually starts. And I'm assuming, was it hot weather? Was it rainy weather? I don't know. There must've been a reason for it to, uh, start a little bit later, but it was out in the backyard, but we'll get there. Um, it wasn't a very long veto comp as, in terms of like some of these veto comps that are individually timed can take like five to six hours uh, plus, but this one wasn't that long. Well, guess what? Brittany's still complaining about being up on the block. She really needs to get another shtick because I'm so tired and I'm sure everybody else in the house is too about her complaining that she's on the freaking block. <laughs> it's week three. It's the third week. Look at how many times Victoria was up on the block. A lot. She was a goat, and I don't mean greatest of all time. She was dragged to the end. I didn't hear Victoria complaining as much as I'm hearing Brittany complain. But she needs not to go up again for another two to three weeks because she's done her part. She's done her... her uh, Penance. I don't even know what you want to call it. Honey, you haven't done anything. <laughs> you haven't done anything. Win a comp, and then you're not going to be up on the block. It's as simple as that. That's how you keep off the block. All right, so, and stop complaining. <laughs> Big D and the other Derek have a chat while they're waiting for the comp to start, and... Big D tells Lil D that he's into Kyland. He's, he doesn't like guys that are bigger than him, you know, to date, I guess, or to, like, thirst after. I don't know why I wrote that down. I think I was falling asleep last night while I was trying to get a jump on today's spoiler, and I just thought, like, oh, okay, cool. I <laughs> just write that down. Put that away for later. So the feeds finally did go down at... 3.20 p.m. Big Brother time. And they came back at 5.45. And we find out that Christian has the veto around his neck. He put it on his neck himself. He won. And now immediately, immediately, Brittany is expecting the veto to be used on her. She said that she's done her part. Now it's somebody else's turn to put an ass in the seat. And, uh, yeah, she's done with it. She doesn't want to be on the block anymore, in case you didn't realize that after the first, um, I don't know, two weeks. <laughs> so the POV players are all wearing tutus, you know, ballerina tutus. 
Um, they probably made them keep it on because they have to do diary room sessions with them in their costumes, probably. So they're running around with their tutus on. And uh, Brittany tells Aza and Sarah Beth that Christian said to her that he'd take her down off the block if she feels uncomfortable. <laughs> really? Why would he say that? Probably just to shut her up, but obviously she feels uncomfortable. I don't I don't know how that wasn't made 100% crystal clear to you, Christian. Now she's going to be expecting you to use the veto on her, and you know damn well that you're not using the veto on her because Xavier already said, you're going to keep it the same. So I don't get why he told her that. That's just opening up a big can of worms. But maybe he was just like, all right, I can't take it anymore. I'm just going to say, you know what? I'm just going to use it on you, whatever. <laughs> oh, wait, I uh, forgot. I had amnesia. <laughs> so Brittany says that Kai said that he doesn't talk to girls that don't flirt with him. Was he thinking wait I don't again I was half asleep when I wrote this last night my husband even came over to me and says please don't drop that laptop on the floor because <laughs> I was falling asleep as I was watching the feeds and you know reading stuff so <sighs> is it Kai that doesn't talk to girls that don't flirt with him or is it Christian that doesn't talk to girls that don't flirt with him leave it in the comments uh but Brittany says well, I find him unattractive and his personality turns me off. And okay, nobody, um, nobody really needs to know that. So their little group, whoever Brittany was talking to, was talking about uh, a battle back. We already know it's not going to happen, but they don't know that. They're still suspecting that uh, who would they want to come back in a battle back? Would it be Travis? Would it be uh, Frenchie? Would it be um, Brent or Brett? <laughs> they definitely wouldn't want to see Brett come back. They think that maybe, uh, well, they think they would try and send out whoever came back immediately right after they came back. But uh, I think they would probably, half of them said Travis. Maybe he'd be most likely to come back, but I think they would prefer Frenchie to come back because they, I guess they got his number. They know what he's all about. So I don't know. Don't worry about it though, kids. It's not going to happen. So it's BV barely dark time. <laughs> you guys missing the BV after dark this year? It was so easy to just flick on the TV and let the TV handle everything, but they don't do that anymore. I guess they didn't get the pop TV contract. So we're just going to have to watch the, well, I guess because now they have uh, Paramount. So, you know, they do what they do. So BB barely dark and Christian and Alyssa are making out in the HOH room. And what happens? Xavier walks in on them again. You're going to need more of a blanket to make out under. You're going to need like one of those cloaking devices or something if you're going to be making out in the HOH room because you're always getting discovered. It's week three. You couldn't keep that under wraps. But anyway, Xavier doesn't seem to be too phased by it by now. I mean, he's already, they've already discussed it a lot. And I, I guess the rest of the house doesn't know about it, just Xavier. I'm sure everybody else is starting to suspect, though. They talk about how amazing their team is, how they've made it this far. Um, they're the only team that's left with four, you know, their whole team intact after Brent goes. So they're feeling pretty good and confident about their gaming skills. And, you know, good for them. Pat yourself on the back. But watch out next week. <laughs> I don't honestly I don't know who um who's gonna go next week it, they could end up uh making it out of teams with their whole team so we'll see that would be a real advantage I think because I feel like this group is pretty tight cool 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 tight 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 so Derek X and Brittany have a chat we get a little more information about the veto comp 
competition, uh, Brittany drew first spot in the competition. So she had to go through the learning curve. She couldn't watch anybody else do it. It was her that went first and that's kind of a disadvantage and she was really gunning for it too, which, and she obviously didn't get it because Christian won it, but she is going to try and get that veto used on her. And Derek X is like, um, I don't think Christian's going to use that, <laughs> but whatever. Uh, I, you know, it's like, why even bother at this point? Isn't Brittany like very literal and how can she not grasp the concept that why would somebody take you down and get more blood on their hands? Because that's just going to, I guess it's, she just doesn't get the social thing, the social aspect of it. It's just an ass in a seat, but it's so much more than that. She just doesn't get it. I don't know. I, I feel bad. Derek X, Alyssa, and Sarah have a chat. They're talking about Brent. Why is Brent throwing comps? Is Brent throwing comps? They discuss uh, his smart persona. And Derek X is like, well, there's more than one kind of smart. There's like street smart. There's like book smart. I don't get how Brent realizes he's the target, but he just can't read the room. But I, I just, I don't get it. Brent, you seem like a smart guy, street smart. You should be, if you're making the connection on you're the target, why aren't you making the connection on you're the target and everybody wants you out? I think they chalked the entire situation to overconfidence is he one of those kids that got a participation trophy all the time and his parents told them how great he was and is is that the failure here of like helicopter parents does he have such a high opinion of himself that he just can't see past that i don't know that's my uh psychology 10 seconds for you guys all right, so Derek X, Whitney, and Hannah are talking about how they're going to tell Brent and what they're going to tell Brent. Are they going to tell him, hey, you're a douche, you're arrogant, um, that's probably not a good idea. They really don't want to hurt his feelings. They want to make this as gentle as possible. They suppose, well, maybe we should just let him watch it on television. <laughs> Maybe by the time he gets on the way home and starts watching it on TV. Or maybe Julie Chen will tell him, hey, you effed up. I don't know. But uh, they don't want to hurt his feelings. And I don't blame them. It, I, even if I don't like somebody, I still don't want to hurt their feelings. Um, maybe they'll tell him like right before uh, the eviction that it was like a house thing. Or um, maybe we won't say anything. I don't know. The Alyssa Brent thing, I still don't get it. I'm kind of getting, um, yeah, maybe Brent's into Alyssa and Alyssa's not into Brent, but she still wants to keep him in her pocket. But um, he tells her that he really thinks Brit is going. He really does. And his final two with Alyssa... But does he really think that he's staying? Does he really? Or is he just like manifesting it? I, I just, I haven't decided on that yet. I just don't know. But he's got this final two with her. And he's telling her that's really going to get me to the end. It's going to get us to the end. Uh, bolstered by my team. Um, they're going to give us protection. Dude, your team wants you gone. Oh, it's so painful to watch. And which begs the question, who is more delusional? Is it Brent or is it Brittany? Brent is handicapped by his high opinion of himself, right? And Brittany is handicapped by her lack of uh, recognizing social cues. So um, 
I was doing a lot of thinking about that last night. I was like, yes, they cast somebody with autism diagnosis to be in the house. She's very high functioning. You can definitely see where the social skills are lacking, though. Although she's, like, very friendly, she just can't pick up on other people's, um, you know, she, you can only do so much. You can only teach somebody to be social so much if they don't recognize facial clues and stuff like that. There's not much you can do with that. But, um, <laughs> now I totally forgot where I was going with this, but, oh, okay. When they're casting, doesn't everybody have like some sort of a handicap like maybe somebody's not physically that um not like a handy handicap like a diagnosable one like maybe somebody not is not as fit as the rest of the cast and they wouldn't do good in the physical competitions obviously she's not that good in social skills so she's not good on the social end but she's very fit and uh good you know, she's flexible and, and she's really gunning in the, in the physical competitions and maybe somebody like Brent who is handicapped by his in, overinflated ego. I mean, so I guess, isn't it kind of like fair all around because somebody's got, uh, everybody's got something that they're lacking in a way. I don't know. Let me know what you think about that in the comments. So Brent's working on his speech for the veto. He's saying, um, hmm, I can provide stuff for you guys. Um, actions speak louder than words. Prove to me that I'm uh, a pawn in this by taking me off the block. Actually, I think later on he said he really does not want to see the veto used. Is he really? <laughs> I don't know. But the backyard is open. So it's hammock time and the first asses that go into the hammock are xavier and whitney they um are unlikely to me to be you know cuddling in the hammock because i thought that xavier wanted whitney out like she was going to be the replacement nom but i guess he wants to keep his enemies closer or maybe they're just putting the game aside for a little while and connecting on like a human level that's always possible right you got to do that you can't play 24 7 you really got to have that downtime but they do start off with some uh brent talk and uh should you know should they tell him i think xavier xavier finally said uh maybe we should kind of break it to him in the goodbye messages are you are you really gonna let him go out like that though with a complete blind side i mean that's going to be rough. <laughs> so Claire and Tiffany, these two have been playing so hard behind the scenes. They're in the storage room. They are starting to worry about Hannah and Derek X. Their little final two. They could see a final two happening between them. Um, and they said, oof, that Hannah, we wanted to pull her in. But she is probably telling him everything. She's probably going back to him and telling him everything. Uh-oh, hot dog. They're going to have to move Hannah. They want, to, they want to work with Derek X. But they don't want Hannah to have him. I feel like they want to have him for themselves and without Hannah. Like, they, if given the choice, they would probably choose Derek X over Hannah. Probably not a bad decision. All right. Uh, we'll get to why later on. <laughs> Whitney. Uh, all right. So let's just uh, let's just cut this short. Let's just give a summary of the rest of the night in the backyard and other places. Whitney did a lot of hanging out with Xavier in the hammock. First, they were like heads apart, you know, like... Um, opposite in the hammock and then they went for the cuddle under a little blanket i don't think there's anything going on there um you know sexy time but they did uh take that up to the hoh bed they were uh laying in the hoh bed talking about whatever not necessarily game they're just hanging out Brittany, uh <laughs> 
was playing pool very loudly. She, I, she's just very abrasive. She's just, I, I just feel like she's very not self-aware of what's going on, um, what she's projecting to the rest of the house. And then after uh, she had fun playing pool with everybody, she had a little freak out uh, that she had a discussion with Derek F. and Aza, the uh, couch room, <laughs> the couch crew. She had a chat with them about her conversation with Tiffany while she was getting ready for bed. And they were like, hey, what's going on? Uh, was Tiffany like passive aggressive to you? Or And Brittany's like, no, just passive. Not everybody's going to be your cheerleader. I mean, I heard the conversation and I didn't think it was any, you know, Tiffany was very reassuring to Brittany. And I don't know why Brittany would be upset. But, again, social cues. And then uh, Brent and Alyssa had another chat out in the backyard on the lounges. Same old shit. I'm not going to dredge it up again. You know what's... I'm not pawn material. <laughs> Maybe I'm porn material. <laughs> I don't know. All right. So, Tiffany and Aza, you know, they're having their thing between them. They have a chat. Um... There's still a lot of tension going on there. They did try and hug it out at the end, but um, no, I don't. I don't think uh, Tiffany wants to make up, but I don't think Aza can let it go. And later on, when Tiffany reported back to Xavier, it was pretty much like she's not gonna let it go. That's unfortunate. All right, so Hannah and Derek X were uh, playing chess and hanging out, having a real low-key cerebral romance, showmance, whatever it is. Are these two going to hook up before the season ends? We'll see. I don't know. They might just, like, do the, like, uh, Tangela situation where they're, like, really low-key friends and then it turns into a showmance or... Maybe one of them will get voted out too soon. I don't know. All right. Christian and Alyssa. Ooh, these had a lot of ass time in the hammock. And that was a very long date. Oh, um, do I do anything that turns you off in, you know, in the house? Um, <laughs> No, I haven't seen you do anything, you know, in the house. And it was just a real pillow talk situation in the hammock. Then they went and got ready for bed and their beds are right next to each other. And they're like head to head in their beds and, and you know, separate beds, of course. But they're like right in each other's faces like the whole night. So there was a lot of, you know, chitty chatty all night until they fell asleep, obviously. I mean, actually, these house guests went to sleep pretty early last night in terms of like, because they've been staying up pretty late lately. Uh, Derek F. You know his ass is glued to that couch, but when they opened up that backyard, he went outside outside for some backyard time. I thought I might have caught him say like, ooh, I feel unsteady out here. I don't know. <laughs> but then later on, he, after a little outdoor time he uh ran back to his couch and uh of course the chat with Aza and Brittany about uh Tiffany being passive all right so then there was a Brent and Derek X chat Derek X he's like the it girl right now he's wanting everybody's wanting to scoop him up I feel like He's in, the, like, the best spot and maybe the worst spot in the house because he's, like, in demand, but he's, like, in demand. So, like, you know what I mean? So Brent's giving him the hard sell. He's trying to pick him up, make him his own, saying, you know, oh, he's all, I've got the brains, you've got the comp wins, let's, you know, stay in the game a long time. And, uh... Brent, you're going. You don't even know it. He could tell you yes all he wants, but you're going, honey. All right, so Tiffany and Claire, they did a lot of chatting. 
a lot of chatting. At first alone, I think they were talking in the storage room for a while. Yeah, they're in the storage room. And then um, they moved to the have-not room. I guess they were, you know, in bed. Lots of game talk about Derek X. You know, he's the new it girl. He's got the perfect body type for this game. He's got the brains. He's an excellent cook. We can't get rid of him because we need him to cook for us. That's just a plus. But um, they want to scoop him up, obviously. They don't want Hannah to have him. Um, I guess they would probably keep Derek X over Hannah. They were also talking about Christian and Alyssa. If the two of them were up on the block, they would surprisingly get rid of Alyssa and keep Christian because they think Alyssa is playing the game better than Christian. Christian, I don't know about that. Christian, they feel, doesn't know the game as well as Alyssa. And I, they do they feel they could just, like, scoop him up then? I don't know. I think he, um... I think he would stay with the bros. I don't know. Meaning, I guess, uh, Derek X and Xavier. I don't know. But that's the end of the spoiler. Were you updated? <laughs> Pretty much everybody uh, was asleep after that. Oh, Ty did join uh, Tiffany and Claire later on, and he also agreed that Derek X is a very good cook. We can't get rid of him. But it's Sunday. I gotta go. Uh, I gotta go take my mom out today. <laughs> We're going to see a show, and Maddie will be back. And uh, yeah, that's uh, and, and we'll be back tonight. So I hope you enjoyed your break from Maddie. I, I, you guys have been very kind in the comments, and I do appreciate it very much. I read all your comments, and I appreciate your kindness, your kind words. Thank you. But I know my place. Maddie will be back tomorrow. <laughs> she is the queen. I'm just a princess when it comes to Big Brother. So, But in the kitchen, we know who the queen is, right? <laughs> just kidding. She's pretty good in the kitchen, too. I'm rambling, so I'm going to let you guys go. Thanks for watching. I appreciate everything. And until tomorrow, much love.